Enjoy a narrated virtual tour of the research aircraft exhibited at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. See photos and videos that cover 28 aircraft that led to advances in aerodynamics, propulsion, stealth, and other technologies. The museum is free to visit and located on the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Southwest Ohio. The Bell X-1B was one of a series of rocket-powered experimental airplanes designed to investigate supersonic flight challenges. Its flight research was related to aerodynamic heating and the use of small reaction rockets for directional control. Its tests played an important role in developing the control systems for the later X-15. After all fuel was consumed, the pilot glided the airplane to Earth for a landing. The McDonnell XH-20 Little Henry was essentially a test stand built to research ramjet-propelled helicopter rotor blades. In May 1948, it made its first flight with self-contained fuel tanks. While the Little Henry proved that a helicopter could use ramjet-propelled rotor blades, it was very loud and consumed fuel at a high rate. The Douglas X-3 Stiletto was designed to test sustained flight at twice the speed of sound while exploring the use of very short wings and titanium airframe construction. Engine development difficulties forced the use of lower-powered engines than originally planned, preventing it from achieving its Mach 2 design potential. Even so, data gained from the program greatly benefited the F-104, X-15, SR-71 and other high-performance aircraft. Northrop built the X-4 Bantam to test if semi-tailless aircraft could perform at transonic, near-supersonic, speeds better than conventional aircraft. Instability of the Bantam at high speed revealed that semi-tailless aircraft were not suitable for transonic flight with the technology available at that time. The McTunnel Aircraft Corporation developed the XF-85 Goblin Parasite to protect B-36 bombers flying far beyond the range of conventional escort fighters. The parent B-36 would carry the XF-85 within a bomb bay, then, if enemy fighters appeared, the Goblin would be lowered on a trapeze and released to combat the attackers. Test pilots could successfully launch the XF-85, but the turbulent air under the bomber made recovery difficult and hazardous. The program ended in late 1949 when aerial refueling of conventional fighter aircraft showed greater promise. The Republic XF-91 Thunder Scepter was America's first rocket-powered fighter to fly faster than the speed of sound. Its rocket engine supplemented its main turbojet engine, greatly increasing the aircraft's speed and resulted in a climb rate of nearly 30,000 feet per minute. The prototypes were extensively tested and modified but the Thunder Scepter program was cancelled due to lack of funding. Convair's XF-92A was the world's first jet aircraft to fly with the Delta Wing configuration pioneered by Germany's Dr. Alexander Lippisch. It was flown by Air Force and the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics test pilots from 1948 until its nose gear collapsed on landing in October 1953. Convair used the knowledge learned from it to design the Delta Wing F-102, the U.S. Air Force's first operational supersonic interceptor. The Bell X-5 was the world's first high-performance airplane to vary the sweepback of its wings in flight. It investigated the benefits and the feasibility of producing aircraft with this feature. It was based upon the design of a Messerschmitt P-1101 airplane discovered in Germany at the end of World War II. In 1951 at the request of the U.S. Army, the Air Force developed the American helicopter XH-26 jet jeep a one-man pulsejet-driven helicopter. The jet jeep was powered by two pulsejets on the end of each rotor blade tip. They performed well but the pulsejets were so loud that the Army found the aircraft unsuitable, and cost considerations forced the cancellation of the program. The turbojet-powered North American X-10 tested flight characteristics and guidance, navigation, and control systems for the planned SM-64 Navajo, a ramjet-powered nuclear-armed cruise missile. Although accidents destroyed several X-10s, the program was successful as one flew at Mach 2.05, a remarkable achievement for the mid-1950s. The Ryan X-13 Vertijet was built to prove the concept that a jet could take off vertically, transition to horizontal flight, 
and returned to vertical flight for landing. It made history in April 1957, when it completed the first full cycle flight when it took off vertically from its mobile trailer, rose into the air, nosed over into a level attitude and flew for several minutes. Then, it reversed the procedure to vertical flight and slowly descended to its trailer for a safe landing. Even though it proved the original concept, its design had limited operational potential, and a lack of funding shut down the program in 1958. The turboprop-driven Republic XF-84H was designed to combine the speed of jet aircraft with the long range, low fuel consumption, and low landing speed of propeller-driven aircraft. Between July 1955 and October 1956, two XF-84Hs made 12 test flights with 11 of those flights ending with emergency landings. Although it was one of the fastest single-engine propeller-driven aircraft ever built, it never approached supersonic speed. Due to poor performance and high maintenance requirements, it never became operational. Bell's XV-3 became the world's first successful vertical short takeoff and landing tilt rotor aircraft. The first complete conversion from takeoff to horizontal flight and back, and the first ever for a tilt rotor aircraft took place in December 1958. It did not go into production, but it paved the way for the modern tilt rotor CV-22 Osprey. The North American X-15's purpose was to fly high and fast, testing the machine and subjecting pilots to conditions that future astronauts would face. It made the first manned flights to the edges of space and was the world's first piloted aircraft to reach hypersonic speeds. This aircraft was modified for even greater speed, adding the large orange and white propellant tanks and lengthening the fuselage about 18 inches. This was the fastest X-15, reaching Mach 6.7 in October 1967. The British-built XV-6A Kestrel was a prototype vertical short takeoff and landing aircraft that underwent flight trials in 1961 in Britain. The next year, the United Kingdom, US, and the Federal Republic of Germany ordered nine aircraft for combined testing by those countries' representatives. A joint evaluation squadron, which included US Air Force pilots, conducted Kestrel trials in 1965. Although the US Air Force did not order it, the U.S. Marine Corps and RAF operated the follow-on Harrier for several decades. The tilt-wing Chance Vought LTV XC-142A was built in the 1960s to explore the suitability of vertical short takeoff and landing transports. In tests, it was flown from airspeeds of 35 miles per hour backwards to 400 miles per hour forward. Although it did not go into production, it foreshadowed future operational transports like the V-22 Osprey. The North American XB-70A Valkyrie was originally conceived in the 1950s as a high-altitude nuclear strike bomber that could fly at Mach 3. Any potential enemy would have been unable to defend against such a bomber. By the early 1960s, surface-to-air missiles threatened the survivability of high-speed, high-altitude bombers while less costly nuclear-armed ICBMs were entering service. As a result, the expensive B-70 bomber program was cancelled in 1961 before any Valkyries had been completed or flown. Theoretically, the unpowered Benson X-25 discretionary descent vehicle could be stowed in an aircraft, ejected with the pilot and deployed during descent. The X-25A gyrocopter on display represented a more advanced concept with a limited flyway capability as it was powered by a small engine. However, with the air war in Vietnam winding down, and doubts about its operational feasibility, the X-25 program ended. This aircraft represents the Martin X-24A, which studied the flight characteristics and maneuverability of a fixed-wing aircraft or a spacecraft in which the body itself produces lift. X-24 flights focused on the last stage of re-entry from space, with pilots flying lifting bodies at speeds of around 1,000 miles per hour and altitudes of around 70,000 feet. One of the last X-24A flights simulated a space shuttle landing approach from about 71,400 feet, and another featured the aircraft reaching Mach 1.6, its fastest speed. The Martin X-24B's flat bottom and long nose added surface area to improve gliding qualities, increasing range and maneuverability. 
a NASA modified B-52 mothership launched the X-24B at 45,000 feet. A rocket engine then accelerated it to more than 1,000 miles per hour as it climbed to altitudes of around 60,000 to 70,000 feet. It made steep unpowered gliding landings like the future space shuttle, including two precise landings made on a concrete runway at Edwards Air Force Base. Built in the early 1980s in great secrecy, the Northrop Tacit Blue aircraft tested advanced radar sensors and new ideas in stealth technology. It proved that a stealthy aircraft could have curved surfaces and minimized the heat signature emitted from the engines, further masking its presence. With its low, all aspect radar signature, Tacit Blue demonstrated that such an aircraft could loiter over the battlefield without fear of being discovered by enemy radar. Using advanced sensors, it could continuously monitor enemy forces, even through clouds, and provide timely information through data links to a ground command center. During World War II, Germany and the United States experimented with forward swept wings but both encountered problems with the metal wings bending dangerously at higher speeds. The X-29A program explored cutting-edge aircraft design features, including forward-swept wings, advanced materials, a forward-mounted elevator and a computerized flight control system. In 1985 the X-29A on display became the world's first forward-swept wing aircraft to fly supersonically. The Boeing Bird of Prey is a single-seat stealth technology demonstrator used to test low observable stealth techniques and new methods of aircraft design and construction. It tested ways to make aircraft less observable to the eye and to radar. The aircraft demonstrates advanced stealth concepts, notably its gapless control surfaces that blend smoothly into the wings to reduce radar visibility, and an engine intake completely shielded from the front. In the mid-1990s, NASA and the Boeing Phantom Works built two unmanned X-36 tailless fighter agility research aircraft to develop technology for a maneuverable, tailless fighter. They were about a quarter of the size of a potential future fighter. Its first flight occurred in May 1997, and the flight test program met or exceeded all of the project's goals. The next year, the Air Force Research Laboratory used the museum's X-36 to test its reconfigurable control for tailless fighter aircraft software developed to save a tailless fighter in case its control system was damaged or malfunctioned. In December 1998, the X-36 made two successful restore flights. The unmanned, unpowered Boeing X-40A was the first phase flight test vehicle for the U.S. Air Force's Space Maneuver Vehicle Program that began in the late 1990s. The program aimed to develop small, reusable, highly maneuverable spacecraft for deploying satellites and conducting surveillance and logistics missions. The X-40A made a total of seven successful flights demonstrating guidance, navigation, and control capabilities in support of the X-37 space plane program. The Lockheed Martin X-44A Manta was a low-cost technology demonstrator that led to more sophisticated stealthy unmanned aircraft. Its design refined tailless aircraft aerodynamics and flight controls while the test program improved Lockheed Martin's unmanned command and control system. It supported other test programs, including a deck handling demonstration for U.S. Navy carriers. The pioneering X-45A demonstrated that highly autonomous uninhabited aircraft could be used to attack opposing surface-to-air defenses. In August 2004 for the first time, one pilot operator successfully controlled two X-45As in flight. In 2005 they autonomously flew a pre-planned mission against simulated surface-to-air missile systems. The X-45As used their onboard, decision-making software to avoid a new, unplanned SAM threat. They independently determined which aircraft would attack the new target based upon their position, weapons and fuel, successfully attacked and returned to base. In January 2008, this modified scaled composites long easy completed the first manned flight of an aircraft powered by a pulse detonation engine. Pulse detonation engines detonate the fuel air mixture to produce repeated, controlled explosions with the supersonic shockwaves creating thrust. Pulse detonation engines are much less complicated and promise to be less expensive to operate than jet engines and they offer a fuel savings of between 5 to 20% over traditional turbojet engines. Although still in development, 
PDEs may become more common as the technology matures. I hope you enjoyed this narrated virtual tour of research aircraft exhibited at the Air Force Museum. If you would like to tour other aircraft in this series, convenient links are found in the description section below this video. Here are YouTube suggested links on similar topics that you may enjoy viewing.